Welcome back. Off the Record starts right now. On the panel this week, we have Rick Pluta and Bill Ballinger, along with Chris Kristoff. Now here's the rundown. A new Michigan presidential poll is out. Was that a grand home meltdown or not? And the governor wants a redo of the blues. Later on, we'll be joined by Roger Martin of Defend Michigan Democracy. All this and more coming up right now. Off the Record. Getting the inside out, it's Off the Record with senior Capitol correspondent Tim Skubik and his Capitol Press Corps colleagues. Production of Off the Record is made possible in part by a grant from Truscott Rossman, Michigan's only bipartisan strategic communications firm, serving statewide, national, and international clients from their offices in Lansing, Detroit, and Grand Rapids. TruscottRossman.com By the Michigan Food and Beverage Association, in conjunction with the Michigan Business and Professional Association, working together for its members. Membership information on the web at mishbusiness.org. And by Hager Fox Heating and Air Conditioning Company, providing comfort to mid-Michigan homes and businesses since 1941. Hager Fox and Bryant, for whatever it takes. On the web at hagerfox.com. And now this edition of Off the Record with Tim Skubik. And we know why you're watching this show this week, but we're not going to lead with this. <laughs> the dating game will be on eventually. Just stay tuned, okay, if you know what I'm talking about. Let's talk about something a little more serious. Let's go around the horn. Is Mitt Romney in trouble in Michigan, yay or nay? Oh, yes. Yeah. Big trouble. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I agree. Why big trouble? Well, to a 10-point spread at this point is, is going to be very difficult to make up. Yeah, but this is, I mean, nobody's paying attention yet, guys. Well, I mean, we, we know it's going to tighten up between now and November, and I don't know if, if you know, the spread is, is really 10, but he's facing the problems in Michigan that he's facing in a lot of these battleground states that he was looking at, Ohio, Wisconsin, and um, he's just not catching fire the way that they had hoped. And in Michigan, it's, you know, that that's problem is particularly acute since he was born here. Mm -hmm. Well, the native son thing apparently is not playing. Well, saying he's in trouble implies that people expected him to win Michigan in the beginning. I don't think anybody expected Mitt Romney to win Michigan over Barack Obama. No Republican has carried Michigan <coughs> since 1988. But this I is a different Republican. This but is one of our own. was born and brought up here, but as we have been reminded, and as the subject has just come up, he hasn't been here for 40 years. Doesn't even have a mm. cottage here. Right. He hasn't come back, really, for any purpose other than to run for office in the last but, five years. So. But, Bill, didn't people expect, the, the didn't Republicans expect that Romney would at least play a little stronger here, expect, that he would make Obama expect, have to fight harder for the state if he was going to win it? Expect <laughs> is a little too strong. Well, hope, hope, but hope. Yeah, given the, given the economy, oh, okay. given, given people's disaffection with the Barack Obama, I mean, there's a lot of people who thought, if not now, when? If, if yeah. you can't beat him now, uh, when could you ever, even in his home state? And, and you know, I think certainly in the, the Republican camp, they thought they had a shot at Michigan. And as far as people not paying attention, well, I think the only undecided in that poll was only around 5 or 6%. Well, the interesting mm -hmm. thing in the numbers in the Detroit News poll was that the people who are Republicans are voting more for Romney because they don't like Obama, yeah. not so much because they like Mitt Romney. That's Which is pretty true much in a true lot of all places. Over the country. Well, what does that much. say about his candidacy? Well, it just means people aren't terrifically fired up over Mitt Romney, but there is a loathing of Barack Obama in the Republican Party and among a lot of voters in the country. Look, let's say one <laughs> thing more. This is one poll. 10 points, yes. We are inundated, awash in polls. Yes. I mean, every week we've got two, three polls. This is a snapshot. There are going to be other polls that show it's not 10 points. Maybe some will say it's more. Probably net, Obama's ahead, maybe three, four, five points in Michigan, I would say right oh, really? now. Romney could still win Michigan. I think the odds are against it. I think they've always been against it. Let's see what happens. The, 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 the classic train of thought when, when a voter is not enthralled with an incumbent is you look at, the voter looks at the incumbent and says, you know, I'm not happy. I'm looking at an alternative. And then they'll look at the alternative, and then it stops being a judgment about the incumbent, in this case, Barack Obama, and it becomes a judgment about the alternative. Better, worse, 
and then they'll either stick with it or they'll flip back. And or how about not vote? Stand. Is, is, is not vote, yeah, none absolutely. of the above, sure. a possibility yeah. oh, when sure you're in that conundrum? Yeah. And it's a, pr well, it's a problem for Obama that's as much problem. as it is yeah. for Romney. Yeah. Probably right. bigger for Obama. Well, well, it's also one that, that right now, you know, the Tea Party segment of the Republican Party is kind of in the acceptance stage that, you know, this is what they've got and, and they're hoping to do something better once November is passed, but if numbers like this keep hanging out there, the question is, will Tea Partiers go, you know, you know, never mind, they should have listened to us, and maybe next time uh, around how you know, they will. But ballot proposals will probably play a part in whether or not that group of people gets out and votes for Romney. Well, maybe. I mean, the, uh, the other conventional wisdom is ballot proposals don't drive a presidential election. Right. You know, it's the other way around. And, and, and uh, well, this how could are, be an anomaly in that regard. How are Michigan Republicans spinning this relatively bad news that their guy may be in trouble here? They're saying what? It's in play. We're going to spend money and we'll be here. They absolutely don't want another John McCain. And that they're not going to get a John McCain. They are not going to shutter the offices. No. no. I this mean, is going to that be, could harm everything else they're doing. This, this is going to be like 2004. That's the way they want to make it, where George W. Bush <coughs> always insisted he could carry Michigan. And he had John Kerry in here, remember, on the Sunday before right. the election, fighting for Michigan when he should have been in Ohio, probably. And Kerry ended up winning Michigan, but it was only three and a half points. You don't want a 17-point blowout like you had over McCain. Well, you know, we, we had all these stories about you know the the you know ancillary groups, the 527s, the education groups pulling their 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 money out that that would support Romney. And I'm just wondering if we're not going to see a flood back of at least some of that cash in an effort to change the narrative, sort of the anti-McCain. But it may be uh, too late. It well, might but be. there's also much more money this time than there was four years ago. They can they can afford to make Michigan a, a an active playground just to keep the Obama camp making them have to spend money here right. and keeping a presence. They can afford to not be another McCain this time, even if they decided in the back rooms we're not going to win, win Michigan, Michigan. They still will spend money here to help the rest of the ticket. They can afford to well, do that. Well, and to now. make sure that you just don't repeat that narrative to to the rest of the country. Yeah. All right. No. This is what you tuned in for, everybody. <laughs> uh, let's go around the table on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm going to tease everybody here a little bit. This is the convention speech of former Governor Jennifer Granholm. On a scale of 1 to 10, it was a what, Ricky? I, you know, I would, I would rate it pretty high. She got a Democratic convention Give me a to, number, start sweetheart. to stand yeah. up and Give say me a USA. Number. But what's your, give her an 8. Uh, 8. You, but for what? I mean, effectiveness, juicing up the crowd, uh, performance. Oh, your, your, your oh. question is great, but yeah. but Tim's Give question me a is more okay. simplistic. All right, okay, that. okay. This I is would, television. Okay. I would say nine. Nine. I'd give it an eight. I think I'd come close. I hate to do this. Agree with Ballinger. Yeah. I think it was a nine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now right. she's been well, criticized roundly for being over the top. That's, legit that's or why not. I wouldn't give it high. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. And the people who don't like her really hated her on that. But thing. they knew and that going in. Well, well, I know that. that. Now they just like, hate her more. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. And, and, and the question was, did she? Did this look silly? Did it go over the top? And that's why I wouldn't give it a, a little well, bit higher because there were some negatives to the it. Question, what is your question? And that's why I asked. Right. It. If it's to ginning up the crowd, it's a twelve. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a twelve. It's you know, yeah. whatever. It's a fifteen. It's, yeah. it's an eighteen. Yeah, yeah exactly. If you, if you move don't your hands like more. Her, move your hands if you're more. even neutral and didn't ever yeah. know who she was, you'd be just aghast. The most effective. We, we might be measuring it differently if she were, you know, looking at at, at some other office. But um, I mean, she really did. And you think about what a convention floor is like. It's big. It's it's loud. She it's, went it's in thinking they're going to ignore me. This is her mindset, I'm told. She's seen these conventions where these people come out and speak and the people are still schmoozing on the floor, they're kidding, you know, talking. And she when here's what happened. When she figured out she captured the crowd, she fed off of them and vice mm -hmm. versa. Plus she had been told, even if the crowd is cheering, you have to keep talking. Mm -hmm. So this is where she folds into the Howard Dean mantra of raising her voice even higher. I did not think this was a Howard Dean meltdown at all. Did no, any of no, you? I did not put it in that category. No. no. And, and uh, frankly, uh, and by the way, why you wait a minute? Why is it the Howard Dean? Remember Howard Dean, Howard Dean had it was lost. That was already over. Jennifer Granholm was trying to get yeah. you to yes. back a winner. You right. know. But the most effective part of the speech was the litany of states 
of yeah. the number of jobs exactly. saved. That was yeah. That showed you know that she how much she can go out there with a, a grasp of numbers and just just sort of repeat them. And that that was very effective. That really really got the crowd. That going. was the home run. Yeah. And who helped write it? Anybody know? Lana Pollock has a son oh, yeah. named oh. J.P. Pollock, and he was backstage and had worked with her on the speech. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. Lana Pollock, former state, state senator, senator, once ran for the right. U.S. Senate. Resides in Ann Arbor. All right, the dating game video. Here's, let's Not take mine. a look. Let's take a look at the introduction. <laughs> Here it is, guys. <laughs> Jennifer Granholm. Hello, Jennifer. Hello. 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 So this, you remember, she just yeah. did that move? I mean, yeah. she actually, she did that at the DNC <laughs> speed. Right? Now, now you know why the Republicans wanted to find that yeah. tape as she was running for governor. <laughs> what kind of commercial would that have been? If they had that video. Well, I understand that you tried to kill that because you owned that suit, <laughs> did you not? That, no, I had a, I had a, a fluffy shirt like that uh, with the ruffles, okay? My wife made me burn it, though. You never know. They might have blown it, you know. Well, well what I mean, would they have tried? I don't know. That's, that's kind of a tricky idea. I mean, you could, you could backfire with that pretty badly, you know, uh, to make yeah. it fun well, of Well, why were they looking for it, woman? Then? Well, just you never to make know it, to what make it embarrassing. You know? I, Frank, I think some of it was just pure voyeurism <laughs> at the time. <laughs> some suggested maybe they should have played that tape at the Democratic National Convention <laughs> <laughs> rather than the speech, but I digress. Well, yeah. other than the big hair, I mean, frankly, a lot of her mannerisms yeah, we and saw. the way she spoke was very similar. Voice to was a little higher. Maybe, yeah, she, I mean, was, she 19. was 19 years old, yeah. whatever, but I mean, the idea that somehow she did something or said something in that appearance that would have been embarrassing, I don't think she really did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and, and, and Bill's right. I mean, we you know we saw the wink that we saw a lot of the, uh, of the that they tried that to extinguish <laughs> after she became governor. Yes. Uh, well, there were there were. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I've always thought this. There were a lot of people, especially on the Republican side, who could just never get over get, get it through their heads that somebody who was that good looking could be as smart as she was. And she, you know, I mean, you look at that from Harvard to governor to attorney general. It <laughs> is a quite leap. a leap. It mm -hmm. is a leap. But, it's a huge, yeah. well, but look at how how did this thing surface? Here is one. Theory, uh, theory, okay? The governor's cable show may be in a little bit of trouble and might be canceled, okay? Yeah. She does this great performance at the convention, and now this suddenly appears, which gins up the discussion about Granholm. Hidden agenda here or not? Uh, look, I thought. It's a stretch, folks. No, well, I, I thought the convention speech couldn't hurt her ratings on the show, yeah. put it that yes. way. Yes. Yeah. Well, so are you saying that this was released on purpose to help no, her out? No, 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 I'm not. No, I That's think I, I mean, No matter what, even though everyone in Michigan has, has watched it and and it made Politico.com, you know, I mean, quite frankly, I, I still think more people have probably, you know, if they didn't know about Jennifer Granholm, learned about her because of the Democratic National Convention yep. speech then. then well, the great mystery the is how it could have disappeared for 34 years and all of a sudden this week it appears. So we because can someone speculate saw forever. Her. Well, I know this is mechanically what we're hearing, but I mean, this whole idea. It does raise the yeah, question. Yeah, I mean, the timing really is incredible. You know how we are in politics. We it, see a sinister motive it, behind everything. Absolutely. You know? People were looking for so long for this thing. Well, supposedly one of the contestants on the show, tell the story. A, a losing well, contestant. Yeah. We're yeah. not sure whether it was male or female. female. Uh, had, had, the yeah. tape, had the tape, probably, and that was it. A friend saw it on Facebook, you know, recognized, made the made the connection, and edited Would out the commercials and put her it online. Would we have seen it on Facebook? <laughs> I, I thought she hair. was Farrah Fawcett. That's who I thought <laughs> I she was. was. Say, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Farrah Fawcett, yeah. let's call in Roger Martin, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Roger Martin is the former bureau chief for the Detroit News in the Capitol Bureau. He entered the public relations field after that and now runs his own company with a fellow former reporter, Dave Waymeyer. One of their clients is Defend Michigan Democracy, which is opposed to the ballot plan that seeks a two-thirds vote to raise future taxes. Mr. Martin is a graduate of MSU. Welcome back. You're on the other side of the table. I am. All I know, though, is if, if we would have been on the show, she would have chosen me. <laughs> no arrogance there at all. I'm not going to touch that line. Okay, Ricky, let's go. You haven't changed. I have no. Um, Door number five. 
Um, um, your job is messaging. So, you know, from the perspective of messaging, talk about the complications of having six questions on the ballot, five of them constitutional amendments, one of them a referendum, one that uh, a lot of people who are, are in your coalition are hoping people will vote yes on. Uh, you know, I'm focused on Proposal 5, Rick, and uh, something, there, there is a challenge here, there's no question about it. When something is this simple and this deceitful, it makes it very powerful. And, you know, I, I go back to the, uh, to the term limits debate of 1992, which sounds like, you know, to, to a lot of people back then, it sounded like the greatest thing since sliced bread. You know, it was this Trojan horse public policy parked on the ballot, and this is very much like that. And, well, again, when Do you think that people are going to buy, you were duped once with, with term limits, don't let it happen again? Well, term you know, limits are still pretty popular. But this ballot question isn't. If you look at the polls, the Free Press poll this morning, in the last three Above weeks... Above 50%? So, uh, no, certain support for it is below 50%. If you factor in leaners now, it's, it's, it's still you above 50 You deceitful. Why is it deceitful? Well, you know, it, it, they, they call it the supermajority proposal, when in fact it is a supermajority proposal. It creates almost this pollet bureau, if you will, in the legislature of 13 senators that would be able to decide all future tax policies in this state. 135 members of the legislature could vote in favor of ending a tax break, ending a tax loophole, creating a new tax, um, raising a tax, and 13 senators could block it. That's not super majority rule, that's super minority rule. And yeah. if you look at the seven states, there's only seven other states in this country that have this in their constitutions. You know, they, the, the, the supporters of this state is going to create prosperity in Michigan. Mississippi is the poorest state in the country. Nevada's got the highest unemployment rate in the country. California is the poster child of dysfunctional government. None of those seven states is in the top ten in employment. None of them is in the top ten of per capita income. That's not prosperity. Who is the when you talk time, about California closing California was very prosperous. Uh, th there were a lot of reasons why California was very prosperous and had nothing to do with this. Sixteen out of twenty years while this has been in the, in the legislature, has been the part of the state of, of the Constitution, the legislature has failed to pass its budget on time. Who's the, gridlock. When you talk uh, about closing tax loopholes, it would not require a two-thirds vote to close a tax Absolutely loophole. Would. You're talking about the trade-off. No, that, I'm talking about th this proposal also says to ex if, if you expand the tax base or the rate of taxation, which means closing a tax loophole, you would also have a supermajority vote. So all the, the tax breaks and loopholes that are in the law right so now would remain. So on either side, liberals mm -hmm. or a block of uh, 13 conservatives, Absolutely. either side mm -hmm. could block what the majority wants to and, do. And, you know, the, and it's those unintended qu consequences of this. It's the reason why the Michigan Chamber of Commerce is opposed, business leaders from Michigan is opposed, labor is opposed, ho you know, hospitals, health care, Mr. Martin, I every campaign going. needs a bad guy. Who's the snidely whiplash in this one? Well, where's the money coming from? <laughs> you know, I'm hoping that, that you guys will, will go ask them where they're getting their money now because before this question was who's certified, the bad guy? it came from one person. That's Detroit billionaire Matty Maroon, who is also obviously the person who's bringing us proposal six. So Slot are you going to make him an issue? Well, you know, I think voters deserve to know that this is a single billionaire who has spent more than $2 million buying the signatures of Michigan voters to put on the ballot a question that would enable him to control tax policy so in the is legislature. So he the only he one behind it now? So far, like 97% of the money they've gotten has come only from him. But maybe he's come up with a great idea. If polls early, you say that. Oh, for him, it's now. a great idea. Yeah, if he can Well, not just, no, no, just him. There was a poll a couple of weeks ago. It was huge, the support. It was up in the 60s. And there's a poll in the paper today that says it's, in, it's at 53. Well, and what certain happens support is below if 50. it carries? What are you going to say then? If it carries, yeah. Well, our hope is that it won't carry. Well, I'm, excuse I'm, me. I'm not, I'm not okay. I, I mean, the idea of requiring a two-thirds becomes law. A no vote. Uh, what if that wins? Uh, what are you okay. going to say? You can't just say Matty Maroon is the only one who was for it. If a majority of Michiganders think it's a great idea, and, and seven I think states that, you know, that is, and that's that concern is why business leaders across the state are opposed. <clears throat> it's why Democrats and Republicans are opposed. Governor Snyder, Senator Richerville. Um, you know, and the people at home say if all those guys are against it, I, it must be a pretty good idea. Well, and police and firefighters are against it. The people who have to come to our house and our business. Um, Health care well, workers what, are against what, it. What Teachers the, are against it. No, no, no. If, if, if the established is, is, is against something, me, the voter at home, says it must be a good idea. Uh, but everybody know, else hates I, it. I, I think there will be those who are uninformed and cynical who will, will go there. But I think once folks are understand the unintended consequences of this, understand that this is minority rule, understand this is funded by a single billionaire. Th this is well, what, why do you think support for this is going to continue? What to do you vote. say to the charge that you're just simply trying to hike taxes? That's what you're for. You're, you're for interests that want to hike taxes, and this would militate against their ability to do that. That's all you are. You want to hike taxes, more state spending. Their message is this will make it, we understand their message. This is just going to make it harder for them in Lansing to raise our taxes, right? That's their message. 
Uh, this That's not what this is about. This is making it impossible. Well, it is. No, it's not. It's about making it impossible to ever raise a tax, enact a tax, close a tax loophole, Could or be close a tax too. break again. Could be ever. Both. Well, I, and again, I think people in the middle, people who are rational and understand exactly that we don't want gridlock in government, that, that sometimes under certain circumstances, government has to be able to raise revenue or close a tax loophole or close a tax break or are going to vote against this. Impossible is not a good thing to deal with. You know, I'm, I'm a business owner. I've, been, I've owned a business in the state for 22 years. I don't like paying taxes either. Mr. Kristoff has a question. Well, what, what is the phrase you want to stick in voters' heads? By the time they remember, the, remember thirteen. Remember, what does that unlu mean? remember, unlucky number thirteen. That if you vote for this, thirteen legis thirteen senators will be able to block the will of the other hundred and thirty-five members of the legislature. You think remember thirteen is unlucky thirteen? Unlucky, unlucky thirteen. Unlucky is that 13. going to be the tagline? Well, we'll, we'll see. We're, you know, we don't know what our tagline is yet. Quite frankly, the, you know, this, it's interesting. <laughs> this is one of those questions where there are, where if you tell voters all <clears> the bad <throat> things about it. Numbers just keep. But here's part of your problem. On. You've got six other ballot proposals, each one competing for the voters' attention. Voters tend to <coughs> eyes glaze over with all these commercials. You're going to have a tough time breaking through. I, I don't think we'll have a tough time breaking through. I, you know, the, the, we're, we're where did you go to public relations school? Uh, with you. Uh, no, no. <laughs> no. I flunked out that's, of that that's, school. See, well, that's, but look, no, that is you have competing messages. I think no on everything is, is a pretty powerful message right now, and it's very clear and it's very simple. And you know, we'll, but you're not going to stick with that. Why wouldn't we stick with no on everything? I mean, it might not be the only message, but I think you that's good. Are, are you mean the people you? on five want to stick with that message? Because there are a lot of people who want something like right. a yes, like on one on the, the, the emergency financial, financial manager. Manager. I, Again, I'm not. I don't. I, I'm not concerned with well, the other. Not, but a lot of members of your coalition are. Are you comfortable yeah. having the emergency manager law go down along with everything else? That's not my concern. My my job is to is to make sure voters understand the negative consequences, the deceit. Of proposals. So, so when you, you say vote no on everything, that, you mean everything. This coalition is together. <laughs> there are there are just you are you know to the to the extent that you are suggesting that, that there are disparate interests on this coalition. That's absolutely correct. how often does everyone the coalition? is united. Right. What is, what's your budget? United what's your budget? Proposal. How much you got in the bank? I'm not going to discuss strategy. Well, you got more than ten cents. <laughs> that's oh absolutely. <laughs> really? Oh absolutely. Twenty. Roger costs more absolutely. than ten cents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll have a couple of million dollars to I'm hawk this thing. I'm not going to go to. I would be. It would be foolish for me to discuss strategy or budget here. That's how good a job do you think the news media is doing discussing this issue right now? Well, every editorial that's been written so far is against it. Um, I, the, the one thing, and, and I can't find an editorial page editor in the state who's for this, not on the right, politically right, on the political left. I can't, I can't find a single one. Now, I think what you guys need to do, though, I think you go, you need to go out and ask them where their money's coming from. You know, Lana Well, I just Pius, asked you, and you have, wouldn't answer it. Everybody has. Well, no, you can just look at our they campaign finance. <laughs> Maddie Maroon is the big backer. That was before it was certified. Now, after. You just go to our website, and you're going to see where our money's coming from. It's well, right then there. tell me for heaven's sake. Well, it's it's everyone, every member of the coalition. You can just go there. How and much have they kicked there. in a piece? I'm not going to tell you. What now, is your... You can keep trying, and I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> but but you know they're not saying who the money is coming from at all. And you can, and if you go to their website, Maddie Maroon, Grover Norquist, those those two guys are listed there. But uh, you know really no one else. Is it so, Americans for Prosperity? Absolutely. And you know that's the hypocrisy of all this too. These guys are saying that this is just going to make it harder to raise taxes in Michigan. I mean, what is Americans well, pros will. for Prosperity yeah, it for? It will be. I'll make it impossible. What, and and th this is my point. What is Americans for Prosperity ultimately for? They want a bathtub. Yes, that's exactly correct. They want to drown government in the bathtub. And, wh and how do they do it? They get, they get politicians across the country to but, sign no but tax But just a second. Let's, let's, no let's say there's a catastrophic ever. event in Michigan, and it's just that we need to have votes to raise revenue. If it's something like that, you can get a two-thirds vote. Show me one time in history where that's happened, Tim. How about a, a, a natural disaster? Show me one time in history in our legislature where a, a tax increase has passed with a supermajority vote. You can't find it. It doesn't happen. This is about stopping taxes at all costs, no matter what, no matter the circumstances. So looking this ahead is, to November. And that's irrational and that's wrong. Looking ahead to November, what's, what's your biggest fear about what occurs between now and then to, to hurt your cause? Uh, quite frankly, I, I, and, and I'll be brutally honest on that one, quite frankly is that these, the folks who have this very simple and deceitful message are able to get on television with a sustained cam campaign and we can't. That, that's, that is my biggest fear. Mr. Martin, you are sitting uh, in a place where you didn't used to be. You used to be with us, I did. a reporter, and you went into public relations. You know, 40 years ago on issues like this, there were no public relations firms in this town. Now, we're a wash. No, they were all in, in Washington. They were all in Washington. <laughs> well, whatever. They've come to Lansing, and you are the flack. You are the front. You are the mouthpiece, the public relations person for a collection of interests. It, why has this become such 
an industry in Lansing, in the state capital, where public relations firms have just almost taken over every. It's not year. just in Lansing; it's it's in every capital city well, across the country. Why? Why is this happening? Because there's so much there's so much money in public policy now, where special interests try to try to control policy, and I think it's it's a natural outgrowth of that. Because what they feel it's not enough to have a lobbyist; we have to have some I, kind I, of public I, face to sell what we're uh, talking when about you, or when advocating you, when you, when and they hire you? When a billionaire, a single person, a billionaire, can spend a couple million dollars, ten million dollars, whatever, putting two constitutional amendments on the ballot, it should concern Have they purchased any TV why, time yet? Did they, we can find nothing, Tim. We, we can is find, that a good sign? I, I can't, it can't be a bad sign. I, you know, if, if you look about, if you consider he's got two, obviously, Amendments that he's bought for the ballot and the 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 bridge proposal six. It's hard it's for me filled to keep up through November. I mean, yeah, they're they're spending. They've got like six different spots up and rotating right now across the state. Uh, we can find nothing. Uh, for are you it. going to be on there? You seem, you seem to hint that you won't be. Well, there, no, but. I'm not hitting that at all. We're going to pull. We're going to do everything we possibly can to to beat this thing. Uh, there's there's no question about that. We're going to do everything we possibly can. Your chances are 50-50. I think they're better than what winning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, no, I think chances are better than that of winning. Give me a number. Give me a number on that one. Can you do that? <laughs> huh? I guess not. You know, All right. Okay. Thanks, Mr. One. Martin. He made the switch very nicely, didn't he? 50 plus one. All right. You're right. 50 Tony. plus That's one. All I need. That's it's good all to I see need. you, Raj. Thanks for joining us on our show. Also, thanks to Chris <laughs> and Ricky and Billy. Don't forget, we're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And we'll see you next week right here on Off the Record. Production of Off the Record is made possible in part by a grant from Truscott Rossman, Michigan's only bipartisan strategic communications firm serving statewide, national, and international clients from their offices in Lansing, Detroit, and Grand Rapids. TruscottRossman.com By the Michigan Food and Beverage Association, in conjunction with the Michigan Business and Professional Association, working together for its members. Membership information on the web at mishbusiness.org. And by Hager Fox Heating and Air Conditioning Company, providing comfort to mid-Michigan homes and businesses since 1941. Hager Fox and Bryant, for whatever it takes, on the web at hagerfox.com. M Live Media Group, providing real time Michigan news, sports, business, and entertainment at mlive.com. Tim Skubik blogs about Michigan politics daily at mlive.com. Off the Record can be seen online anytime at video.wkar.org. Episodes on DVD are also available for purchase. Michigan Public TV stations have contributed to the production costs of Off the Record with Tim Skubik.